So I've been looking to see what I can make uh, as a snack for my kids when they come back from play in the evening. And they said they wanted something cheesy and I'm looking at something healthy. How can I combine the both? Okay, so what I found here is a paniyaram. Great, so I have some veggies chopped and kept and I have some cheese in the fridge and a batter. I'm just going to go ahead and get some batter and cheese and make my paniyarams. Alright, I'm ready to get started. So I'm ready to grate the Britannia cheese. It's one of my children's favourite cheeses. And a lot of things that I like about the cheese is one is just notice how beautifully it just opens up. It's so easy to use and it just slides open just like that. Isn't that wonderful? Awesome. And another thing I like about these Britannia cheese cubes is that they grate so well. So notice the beautiful shavings of the cheese that is coming out. It's so good and delicious and it's perfect to add into the paniata. All right. Now that I've grated my cheese, I'm all set. I'm just going to go ahead and add all the vegetables, the grated cheese and everything into my idli dosa batter and uh, we'll be ready to make the paniyarams. So I have some bajra dosa batter here with me. I always like to add millets to my batter, be it ragi or bajra, it becomes really nutritious. So it's very simple to make. So I soak two cups of bajra along with one cup of idli rice and stay, keep it aside for about eight hours and then keep two cups of urad dal, which is a whole urad dal with a tablespoon of methi seeds and then soak it for about eight hours as well. And then after that, after it soaks well, grind them all separately together, mix them, combine it with salt and then again ferment it for about eight hours. And once it's risen, your idli dosa batter is ready, which you can also make idlis, dosas, panyarams, utapams and all of it with that batter, right? So I have this batter, which is bajra. I'm going to go ahead and add the vegetables. So I have some grated beetroot, I'm just going to add and then some grated carrots and some finely chopped onions. That's perfect. Just go ahead and add in all the remaining ingredients from there and then we're going to add in the cheese. So now finally, I'm just going to go ahead and add in the grated Britannia cheese cubes. We'll just add a little extra because my children are just going to love it. Why not? Just add the whole thing. Go ahead. Indulge. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a stir and combine it well. There's already salt in the cheese as well as the dosa batter. So I'm not going to be adding any more salt. But if you feel you need some more salt, then you can go ahead and add it. Right? So I'm just going to go ahead and mix it up well. There's lots of veggies there and this grated cheese is just going to melt beautifully inside. And it's going to taste absolutely delicious. Great. Notice the color. I just love it. Great, so this is done and I'm all set to make the paniyaram. I'm just gonna go ahead and preheat my paniyaram pan and we'll get started. So I have this paniyaram pan here with me. It's absolutely versatile, not just for making paniyarams, but I also make koftas, pakodas, and a whole lot of things, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and drizzle some oil into my pan and ensure that it's preheated before you add in the uh, dosa batter, okay? So I'm gonna pick this up. It's already preheated going to drop in like a spoonful of this cheesy paniyaram batter into the paniyaram pan. There you go. It's just perfect. And we'll fill up all the cavities and I'm going to be covering the pan and then steam cooking it on the top side and then after that we'll open the pan and then cook it on the other side and the cheese is just going to melt in right through. And there you go, that's the last one. I'm just going to go and find a lid and then cover this pan. Just going to go ahead and cover the pan and we'll allow it to steam cook on the top on medium heat, cook it on medium heat. And then once it's steamed cook and the top feels cooked completely, we'll flip it over and then pan fry it on the open. We'll wait for a couple of minutes. So it's been steaming for about three to four minutes and it's beautifully steamed. It's a little raw, but it's, it's just there ready for me to flip. Great. I'm just going to go ahead and flip it and that's beautiful there, it's just perfect, it's got a perfect crust, nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and drizzle a little more oil now so the bottom half also becomes nice and crisp. So in just another couple of minutes this will be done and I'll be ready to make my tomato chutney which is going to be a cheesy tomato chutney and I can't wait to make it and show you how delicious it is, okay? 
and the bottom half is getting steamed as well so that's great just gonna flip it and allow it to cook for a few more minutes on the bottom side and then we should be ready okay so this looks perfect it's done completely and I'm happy with the way it looks and notice the nice pink colors from the beetroot I'm ready to take it out of the pan and we'll put it aside and I'll show you how to make the cheesy tomato chutney in just a bit okay so into my pan add some oil we'll add in the onion so I have some green chilies and garlic over here which I'm just gonna go ahead and add and I'm gonna saute this until it becomes nice and soft it will take about three to four minutes I allow the onions to caramelize a little bit because it will taste really nice in the chutney so now that the onions have caramelized and lightly browned, I'm going to go ahead and add the chopped tomatoes. We'll give it a stir. And at this stage, I'm also going to add in some salt and red chili powder as well. And allow the tomatoes to soften. And the red chili powder will give it that little bit of spice. Okay? And that's it. So we'll allow it to cook until the tomatoes become nice and mushy and then almost most of the water is evaporated okay so another three to four minutes and we'll be done with this so the tomatoes are nice and mushy and it's all most of the moisture is evaporated notice it's thick and at this stage i'm just going to go ahead and turn off the heat and allow it to cool a bit before i blend it along with the britannia cheese bread so i'm ready to add this tomato mixture into my blender and we'll blend it along with the cheese Great. My next step is to add in the Britannia classic cheese spread into this. It's going to add in a delicious creaminess to it. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and scoop it out. And these cheese spreads come in six variants and they're bursting with delectable flavors. And apart from, you know, using them as a spread over toast because they spread like magic. And uh, I also use it in making pasta sauces. Uh, really, it tastes really nice when you use a cheese spread in a pasta sauce. And also making chutneys like this because children will simply love this type of chutney which has some cheese in it. So I'm going to go ahead and add in just a little more of the Britannia classic cheese spread. And that's it. I'm just going to cover it and then blitz it. Can you notice how creamy it's becoming? It's just brilliant. And that's it. Notice how creamy it is. It's just absolutely perfect. Okay, now I'm ready to serve it. So I'm just going to go ahead and serve it. And I'm sure my children are going to love this panyaram with this cheesy tomato chutney. It's not just healthy, but delicious too. I can't wait to take a bite. Just going to take, tear open one. And just dip into this chutney. Mmm. So crisp and delicious the tomato chutney has a perfect creaminess and the panyarams are just absolutely cheesy and fun i'm sure they're gonna love it you should try this in your kitchen you can either serve it to your children as a snack or for breakfast uh, when you have some friends over or even as an appetizer for your parties and when you do don't forget to take a snapshot of it and share your cheesy kitchen moments with us we'd love to hear back from you